thanks for joining in uh, all over the world, from uh, whatever city, all over the world. You're welcome to this service. And many of us on site, in any of our locations, you're welcome to this uh, communion service. We have Kule Shuri in the house. My first question is, uh, can we just know who you are? Okay, I want to also have a video introduction before myself. Okay, can we, who, who are you? Okay. Thank you. you Thank you so much, Pastor Yemi. First of all, I need to celebrate, you know, Pastor Yemi and Pastor Bimbo Davis for, you know, um, all they represent. I, I can spend all my time um, articulating my value and the premium I place on my host anytime. I am not the kind of person that people want to host easily. Um, I've accepted that, um, and I celebrate it myself. I, I don't want to be delivered from that, actually. Um, so when I find people who have the visionary strength to identify with my work, to celebrate it, and to see it in their work, I, I don't take it for granted. It speaks to what they understand and the level of understanding that they have and the capacity that is available in the house. And so, first of all, I want to congratulate you all for being located in this house. Um, my, what I would challenge you to do is that this type of thinking and this type of leadership are authentic. One of the most rare experiences you can have in the, in the Christianity of today is authentic leadership. It's so rare, and I know what I'm saying. And so when you find yourself in a ministry with authentic leadership, you want to plug in. Um, don't just warm the pews, find what you can do join the workforce, get important. There's so much that we have to do. We are not many, and we have to recognize that and invest in the little resource that we have and expand it um, intelligently. So thank you, sir, and thank you, ma. I want to thank all the leaders and all the guys behind the scene, the workers, the choirs. Thank you all for the work you do. God bless you. Um, so you know my name. I am a futurist. Um, the, the interesting thing about the prophetic gift is that it has expression within the church and beyond the church. So a lot of prophets are not able to shape culture because essentially they think within the limits of what God is doing in the church. They forgot that God is actually the monarch of the universe and that he has agendas both within the church and in the culture, popular culture, I mean. So there's a skill called strategic foresighting, which is what futurism and futurists are about. And that is a lower resolution of the prophetic gift, right? And so when you function with a gift of God prophetically, you are able to easily zone into that um, strategic foresight. So I'm, a, I'm that. I'm also an iconoclast. It means that I consistently check beliefs, um, held on beliefs. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Econo <laughs> that is I-C-O-N-O. C-L-A-S-T. Pastor knows. He just likes to tease. You know, you know him. So... Iconoclast. So, and what we do essentially is just to take a second look at um, long held beliefs yeah. and to see how relevant they are. They might have been true and they may not be, they may mm. still be true, mm. but no longer potent or relevant mm. in the form that they were. And it is our duty to upgrade it, change the software, and, and bring the new software. Um, right? So, that is what I am. I'm also a global influence strategist. I help people find their place in the world, um, um, whatever that place is. Um, that's what I do. And of course, I'm, I'm a minister of, of the gospel, and I love that more than any other thing. Amen. Thank you, sir. Are you putting your hands together for the futurist and the global strategist? Uh, now, one of, the, one of the things that actually uh, pulled me or drew me close to you was mindset. You know, when I was on campus, I started a fellowship on campus, and the core scripture we had was uh, Romans 12, verse 2, that do not conform to yes. this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that uh, someone cannot change until you change the way they think. Yes. And one of the principal work of God's word is to change yes. our mindset. Yes. Unfortunately, some people had made a religion out of that and it's not really working. So when I meet people that are able to help people change the way they think, I, I'm, I'm excited. And because any limitations we have is of the mind. Yes. So I, and I know you work with people within the church and the secular system. I, I just wanted to speak to that limiting mindsets yes. at the top of them, you know, like the top 
two or three things that you noticed limit people. You said it, uh, you know, at the conference, but we don't hear it again, and I'm sure the Holy Ghost will breathe through you Amen. in a way that Amen. Um, it will reach. Amen. Thank us. you. Thank you, Pastor Yemi. So, uh, like you said, there are countless of these beliefs that we have to take a second look at every time. One of them is the idea that the human spirit can find its completion outside in or find its highest misery outside in as opposed to inside out. So you find people place a lot of premium on material things, you know, a car, a house, you know, good clothes and all of that because fundamentally in their mind, what they don't know is that they have prioritized the impact, you know, of I mean, their meaning and their purpose essentially from what is outside in. Forgetting that the human spirit itself is designed to only be regulated inside out and not outside in. And what that means is that when you miss that little line, you begin to disempower your own self internally and empower things that are outside of you that are designed to be truths of what you come into terms with inside of you. So wow. that is why people believe that, you know, uh, their destiny can be, you know, um, edited by some force somewhere. And, and I think I need to say this is very important. There's no spirit in the world that can edit your life or edit your spirit. Your life and your destiny is actually read only. It, it, it can't be edited. Let me tell you what I mean. So that you don't think I'm just a technicality. You see, I guess Jesus is our perfect theology, Pastor. Yeah. It's our perfect theology. You can look at the life of Jesus and you can determine everything you should believe from there. And whatever is not in his life is, hum is human made. It may not be wrong, but it's a human invention, right? So if Jesus, if I ask you, who is the most important enemy to the cause of the devil? It would be Jesus, right? So the yeah. most important destiny that the devil wants to stop in this life is Jesus' is destiny. Jesus's de destiny. So let's look at how the devil attacked Jesus. How the devil attacked Jesus is a clue to how he will attack because your life, no matter how complex, is, is low right. resolution compared to the life of Jesus. That's right. So, so <laughs> it's if what, you then... It's low what? It's low resolution. Mm -hmm. Etc. It's equal. No? We are all children of God. We are all God. God is inside of <laughs> us, but it's we are way, not Christ. It's right? the way you are resolution. <laughs> <laughs> so... So if you understand that, so let's look at what the devil wow. did. If your enemy is coming, if they said the greatest enemy you have has four guns and he was killed and all of our own enemies has three, three guns, we should go and ask the person who killed the one with four guns how he At did least, it, right? Yeah. So if you go to, the, to how the Jesus was attacked, you can understand a lot. Human beings with a skill, remember the three, the wise men, they were not three, but the wise men were yeah. not spirits. They were not witches. They were not wizards. They just had a skill of astrology. And they studied the life of Jesus so much that first of all, they saw his star. They interpreted that star enough to know the weight of, of his destiny. destiny. They knew this is the Messiah. They knew that without being witches or wizards. It's just understanding, interpreting dynamics and they were able to put it together. They did not only know the weight of his destiny, they actually traced it to his location. Hmm. Hmm. So there are people who, by some type of awareness, can find out all you are about. Hmm. Aye. Everything you are about. Aye. Aye. You know, and all of that. They can find out everything you are about. Number two, they cannot just only find it out, they can actually trace it to exactly where you are sleeping. <gasps> wow. But... When it was now time for Jesus to be attacked, they had to abandon the spirit realm and come down to the physical and think and strategize. Because they now said, anyone age two and below, kill. Every attack mm. against Christ was strategic by men, amongst men, against a man. It means that the destiny of Jesus itself was read only. They can read your destiny, but that's it. If they have to attack you by any sense, they have to come to this world and they have to start thinking. The limiting belief is you overrate that ability to Ooh, read. Overrate. And so when you want to respond to the devil, overrate. you are also trying to respond in overrate. this. No, the spirit realm is to see what is going on. The physical realm is the platform of engagement. And so you see 
to act, he reveals to redeem. The revelation is in the spirit. The redemption is an act of man. That is why Jesus did not die in the spirit. He had to come and die here. There's no way the redemption of man can be completed in the spirit. They can plan in the spirit. God planned for thousands of years in the spirit. He did everything. But when it was time for the eventual, ultimate, eternal redemption of man, God had to come come down here. So in your thinking about the devil, it's easier for you to think of witches and wizards and miss legislation. One legislation, one government law. If you look at a gay movement, for example, Mm. I'm not trying to put out anybody. Mm. All of those things did not happen. It happened through human laws. So we have to come back here and begin to ask ourselves, God, what do we need to understand? And as soon as you are done with that, the next question is, what do we need to do about what we understand? Wow. That is freedom right there. Wow, legislation. Because I, I remember last year when the pandemic, you know, and uh, yes, we said sir. churches should not meet. It yes. looks like a, That's legislation. It, 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 looks, it looks like <laughs> well, the devil, you know. But and we're out of church physically for several months. That has never happened. Okay. And even Jesus, the attack on Jesus was never successful anyway. It wasn't. The angel had moved him out. Yes, so, so with instruction. Yeah. And even the instruction God gave Jesus Did was the, move. Yes. It was a physical movement. Yes, true, it's true. You know. It's true, it's true. So, so we have abundant capacity in the spirit to have foreknowledge of whatever reality is. Because reality itself is untrue and it's incomplete. So if you define yourself by your reality, you are going to miss the truth. Because the data available in truth is superior to facts. So truth is a positive reality beyond the facts. The facts are minimal. Okay. That is why you can be dead broke and say you are a billionaire. Because the truth is you are. Yeah. You know, but the fact is you don't have a, a dime in your pocket. So to be able to relate beyond those limits will require that we understand that our senses, our minds, are, 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 I mean, the Bible even says that those who through senses have their, those, have their, those who through practice, yeah, have, have their senses, senses exercise, trained yeah. to discern good and evil. So our senses can interpret divinity on a lot of levels. And there's a reason why God gave us those senses and the soul and the mind and then the human spirit. And so when we think like that, um, it's, it's limiting. Another one I need, I need to say to us very okay. importantly is the premium we place on speaking in tongues. I cannot overemphasize that. A lot of people come to me, they, they, they say they want to touch me, they want to get my handkerchief. I oblige because there's a theology that supports that. But deep inside of me, I know that these guys are missing the main idea. Because the biggest idea that we have in Christ Jesus that even makes touching the handkerchief make sense, that makes touching you make sense, is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, touching handkerchief and carrying it around is diabolism. <laughs> It is the Holy Spirit in the picture that makes it spiritual, that makes the anointing to work. So understand that. And when we, therefore, see the gift of the Spirit, I I can't help but to explain this every time. The, The gift, the ability to speak in tongues is not just a recognition, for example, of a spiritual exercise that acknowledges your position in Christ Jesus, so that when you are born again, you can then speak in tongues. That is not what it is. What it is, is one of the greatest advantages that we have. You know, in science, we have what we call encryption. Have you heard about encryption before? Yes, yes. yes. That's what speaking in tongues is. Speaking in tongues is an encryption. It is a conversation between two ends, coded, that nobody else can interfere, understand, or relate with, yeah. except the two ends that are communicating. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes, yes. So when you understand that, you want to bring your most important conversation there. into that realm. Because English language can be interpreted. Yes. French can be interpreted. So because he said, when we speak in tongues, he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not to man, All but to God, God, for no one understand, how be it he speaks mysteries to the, the world spirit. known to God. Yes. And let me also go for that. That everything in the new, you know, is a completion of what is, it, what is in the old, right? So at the Tower of Babel, remember that men, manhood, I mean, the human race was at its highest level of strength because the Bible said whatever they imagined in their togetherness cannot be held away from them, right? And then when they began to mess up because they wanted to grow vertically as opposed to expanding horizontally that God asked them to do, what they now did was they wanted to construct the building into heaven and then God responded by scattering their language. And when God scattered their language and gave them diversity of language, it is that diversity of language is a limitation 
The reason why we have many languages is to stop our ability or hinder or contain our ability to collaborate and to imagine at the highest level. Yeah. So hmm. the, the diversity of language was not a blessing. It was a limitation. God gave us many languages to, to contain our excesses. Now, we carried all that journey all our life until the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the restoration back to the zone of one language, one tongue, before man ever had diversity of language. Ah. Now, the world is still perplexed, and that's why the United Nations can never organize the world together because the, the reason for diversity of language is, is to, to limit their collaboration. So, the ability to work together is hindered. The League of Nations failed, the UN will struggle. But the unitedness that we have to experience is that you are Igbo, I'm Aousa, I'm French, I'm whatever, yeah. and God is in heaven. And when we say Libro Sakarabo Chandarabosa, there is a unity, a unison, but most importantly, Kala. there is a shift to your most creative zone. That zone that they were, that they said nothing they imagined could be withheld from them because of the right gift there. of one song, is what you come into. Uh, so you don't speak in tongues and just say, and you are just, you know, doing no, casual you are creating. Things. And you are, in you that moment, you are in your power zone. Yes. Even if it's for one minute, you are in a power yes. zone. Yes. It frees you beyond your logic. It frees you beyond your understanding. The goal of academics is regulation and order. The goal of education is strength amongst men. Academics is what you are taught. Education is what you, are, what you teach yourself. Revelation is what you are given. Yes. So teachers and human beings can help you. Observation can help you within academics and yeah. education. Yeah. But revelation is the strength of the Christian. Yes. And yes. that comes through a walking, talking relationship with the Holy Spirit based on the word and most importantly, understanding those tools we have been given of which speaking in tongues is a it's major a prayer, one. It's a okay. Hallelujah. I, I thought I should say that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, in our devotions <laughs> this week, I've been talking about that, about also. the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that, you know, praying in the Holy Ghost, it's, it's, it's our advantage. Yes, it's sir. super advantage that we yes, have. Sir. And uh, any businessman that takes advantage of that can, can do anything. Yes, sir. I mean, if he understands the innovations that can come from it. We, are, we ought to be better than Joseph, better than Daniel, better than uh, all those guys because of this opportunity to encode, what do you call it? Encrypt and, <laughs> and, 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 and converse with God and the enemy is just looking. I cannot do anything. Cannot interpret it. Only you and God understand that and things are happening. Okay, now, um, I, you, you've been to places in the world. Yes, sir. You've lived in Nigeria for, I don't know, for a number for of... a long time. Yeah, so are there things you observe that also, from a Christian perspective also, that has limited us as uh, Africans? Yes, yes. So I asked my friend who is um, white, and I asked him, sorry, um, who is a Christian and, and speaking tongues just like us, Pentecostal, like all of us. Like white or something? White. Oh, okay. It's white. So I asked him, sorry, if you, if you eat in your dream, what does it mean? How do you feel? I'm happy. <laughs> I'm giving you a true life story. Should I go there? So I said, if you eat in your dream, what does it mean? He said, wow, that would be great. I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. I said, you don't know what you are saying. <laughs> that would be great. People are calling their pastors. People are calling their imams. They're calling their prophets when they eat in their dream. So I realized that we have what we call parallel universes. You know what a parallel universe is? It's a, it's a scientific theory. The idea that you can exist in different places hmm. with a different level of understanding wow. in multiple zones, all at the same time. So for example, parallel universe is that you, we are here, me and Pastor Yemi now, all of us are here, but we are also seated in Christ right now wow. in the heavenly places. Yes, yes. We yes, are seated yes. there. Yes, now, yes. Th there are some Christians who resist uni parallel universes and the, the theory of parallel universes hmm. because they don't understand that science is the gift of God for the advancement of the human condition. But when they see science, the doubters are those who don't know science, then scientists are the greatest problem of science. Hmm. But science in itself <laughs> is a gift of God for the advancement of humanity. Yeah. 
And so anytime I see anything scientific, I know God gave them. So quickly I'm looking for, so yes, God, what was your thought? And it leads me there quick, yes, real yes, quick. Yes, yes. Because I know that there's no idea that it's independent, right? So part of what that means is that you can actually exist in your highest form of awareness on a particular issue and be dead ignorant hmm. completely in another universe hmm. on another issue. Hmm. And you can profit so massively from the knowledge you have within the universe of the particular thought and you can also be suffering miserably hmm. between, under the weight of the ignorance you have within another, another universe. Another. What has happened is that those guys at the other end have a different perception of evil. And they have a different perception of the devil. I can talk about so many things in the popular culture, in society, and how we live every day as Africans and, and people in the West or in America. But I can even talk about the critical difference between how we faith and how we contain our spirituality and how they do theirs with the same Bible, with the same scriptures, but different understanding. And when you understand that when jazz was jazz, when jazz juju was, was juju, juju, you were colonized. So if you understand that. Hey, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, but they fought, they fought some more. <laughs> So you were colonized. And then if you... If by, you to, by higher juju. You know, yes, by you higher know, juju. Could, and if you want to be more humble, if you want to be more humble, you then realize <laughs> that the weapon that colonizes you is gunpowder, which is no longer recognized as a weapon in warfare today. We now have surface-to-air missiles, RPGs, um, AK-47 assault rifles. We have nuclear weapons. A dang gun that colonized us is no longer recognized as a weapon. It's, in now, it's now in history that this type of superiority existed. Right? But that wait, was wait, enough so to conquer Shango and Arumila. So it was Dengon that conquered? Yes, it was. Oh, glory. It was Dengon. So, but that was enough to humble the entire ancestral history of the power that we understand. Now, don't get me wrong. There's power in our history. It's just weak psychology. Right? But all of that has gone forward to where we are now. What has now happened is that these guys don't see evil in areas that we see evil. And I found a lot of liberation in that. And I'll give you an example, Pastor, if you permit me. I'll give you a quick example. A guy who is an executive here went to a church in Scotland, went to Scotland to minister. And when he got to Scotland, no, no, for a board meeting of his company, he's a big boy here, but he belongs to a congregation in Nigeria where prayer is a is big deal. I won't mention names. Yeah. So he went in there and under his hotel, a church was there on Sunday morning. So he was hearing worship. Oh, so he said, oh, great. Let me go and worship with these people. So he went in. When he got into the auditorium, they were praying. They were in a prayer time. So the pastor just said, okay, so this is the prayer point. Let's pray. And he went on. He, didn't even, he just went on in his own way of praying. Shabba, shabba, oluwa, oluwa, jo, idoba, jo. He just went on, on. True life story. So an usher went to him and tapped him. So he said, he was said, yeah, excuse me, he said, do you need coffee? <laughs> True life story. So he went like, coffee? Then he realized he was the only black person in the room. So these guys must be discriminating. They've seen that I'm black. Why is he talking to me about coffee? We are praying. Everybody is praying and he's asking about coffee. So he went on the guy. Why are you talking to me? So the guy said, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I just went to so the guy, by the way. He said, from that moment, he couldn't pray again. He said, once he tried to pray, the Holy Ghost will ask him, why you and why coffee? He said, if we bind it, I bind it. God said, no. Why you and why coffee? And he said, throughout the service, all he was hearing in the spirit was, why you and why coffee? So at the end of the service, he said he went to the guy again. I said, excuse me, why did you ask? He said, the guy said, oh, I'm, I'm, he said, no, 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 no. I'm sorry I was upset. I just want to ask you two questions. Why me? and white coffee. <laughs> so the guy said, oh, you know, um, the way you were moving, you know, I just thought maybe you were battling cold, you know, um, so I, I wanted to know that we have coffee dispensers in the hall because it was winter, so you could have some coffee. So he said, what? You didn't think I was praying? I've never seen prayer like that before. <laughs> You know, and so they got talking. He said, you know, if that was prayer, it's like there's an announcement from God that I will not hear you. 
and then you are saying, no, you must hear me, <laughs> kind of thing. And then the Bible, Jesus himself said, they think they will be heard for their many words. Because they now assume that they need auditory strength to communicate authority. That is why in Africa we shout on our staff. We shout on our friends, on our wives, on our husbands. Because to us, we need auditory strength yeah, but, but problem, to connect but, with drama. So we, but the yes, problem sir. in this area is... <laughs> so, so this is the thing. The problem. So if, if I want to fire you right now, if I need to fire you in my office, <laughs> I have two, two ways. I can say, you are fired! Get out! I can say so. That's too much investment because... I am not only losing the staff, it's bad enough I'm losing the staff, I'm not losing myself. Or I can say, you are fired. I can even smile. And he doesn't need to believe me, you know. Once security comes and later comes, he will know that he has fired. Because the moment I say you are fired, authority has gone forth. And that is why Jesus could do those big miracles with ease. Because what activates the miracle is not your drama, right? It is the drama in the power of the Holy Ghost that goes forth regardless of the intensity of your... Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, because I'm, I, not, I'm not to balance that. Yes, there's, I was going to say... There's a place of fervency. Yes. But what is driving the fervency? Is it that you're doubting God? Exactly. Or you, or you, are, you understand that yes, balance? So yes. You will say, because some of you come to yes. us, Father, thank you. No, 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 no. And then... There must be that understanding yes. first of your place. Yes. If there's fervency, then it makes much power available. Yes. But if there's no understanding and you're just gyrating, and which I think a lot of people do. Every time, Out actually. of doubt, out of... Fear. Condemnation. Anxiety. Yes, yes. You know, pressure. And that is the energy for what we do, right? And with understanding, you know, there's so much more that we can do. So I found out that the, the premium we place on evil here is essentially based on African, what we call ATR. African okay. traditional religion. So there's a lot of drama. Even our <laughs> names, you know, Badebo, you know, Bami, you know, <laughs> and, you know, Alade, you know, our, every, there's drama, which is fine, which is our culture. But you must understand that the gospel, <laughs> <the> go <laughs> the gospel transcends the limits of culture. In fact, the gospel is not culture at all. The yes. gospel is a divine experience visiting man yeah. and heavenly experience, even touching earth, basically. So we have to graduate to really understand at what level we should be in our premium of the devil. Um, so part of what that means is that a lot of energy is invested in Satan, you in know, fighting Satan, fighting Satan at the expense of worshiping the graciousness, oh. the mercy, the favor, all of what God has prepared for us, the weightier matters of spiritual exchange. Mm. So you have people know more about the devil, actually, than, than they know God. about God. Yes, right? Yes, yes, you know, yes. and, and, I, and I want to advise, like I say every time, because all of what I'm saying mm. will be meaningless if it doesn't do one thing, which is drive you into the word of God. If pastor says anything that you've never heard before, Check. don't be excited about what he's saying. When I say anything you've not heard before, don't let that excite you. Two things you will do. First of all, greet knowledge not with acceptance, but curiosity. If you greet knowledge with acceptance or view, you'll be prejudiced. Hmm. Oh. No matter the knowledge, be like the Berean Christians, who after listening to all that one said, we'll check it out. What Paul said, went to check it to see that all that Paul said was true. But equal to that is to realize that if I've lived in this world for 40 years and I've been a Christian for 15 years and somebody is saying something new, it just tells me that all I know is what I've studied. And there's so much more I still need to know that I'm here to study. Hmm. And so when you hear revelation, it should unlock your humility to study more wow. and to stay in God's word. It's not to get excited, but to understand that, wow, there's so much newness in Christ on a daily basis that should never get us to be so comfortable. And this is what I believe, Pastor, and I believe this very strongly. You can't be more prayerful than you are full of study. Yes. Because yes. a lot of your prayers will be intelligent. Because the Bible then says we pray amiss. Yes, yes, yes. When yes. you stay in the word as the foundation, 
Don't get me wrong. Pray, you must pray. I but pray more than most people pray. But I fast more than most people fast. But the foundation of that is, word, is word. the word, which gives you spiritual intelligence, intelligence to navigate. That's why we see scriptures like, order my steps in your word. Because it's not just mm. to be around, but to be present. And being present requires navigation. And navigation requires clarity and intelligence. And that intelligence is the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things. Thank right? you. Wow. Okay. Now, um, the pandemic showed up last year. And I remember uh, when it showed up, I was scared or confused. And, I, and the Holy Spirit said, well, whatever you define the season to be is what you will experience. And he said, I remember there was that inspiration in my heart that define it on time because you're going to get intense. Yes, so I remember I started saying things like, it's my best moment, my best opportunity, things like that. So I, I believe the pandemic ought to be a blessing if we have the right perspective. Can you help us with um, certain perspectives from the pandemic yes, that will help business people or career yes. people here? Yes, yeah. sir. Sir, before I answer that question, I just remembered something I want to quickly say. Yes, sir. Africa is plagued with their drive to travel abroad. <laughs> yes. Right? Everyone wants to get out, and then Japan is getting, gaining traction and scaling real fast. Yes. And then um, up Plan B is scaling real fast as a word, you know? Yes. And all those things are scaling. Yes, because scripture says flee all appearance yes. of evil. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I want to say. If you travel abroad because you want to respond to your economics, you want to respond to your economics and to your welfare, you are celebrating an escape. Hmm. That's what you are doing. In other words, survival is your drive. You will never outgrow that drive. You will land in America, no doubt, but you will be so small, such that you will eat all that can be eaten. You will look good and look fresh. You will drive good cars, but that will be it. Fools do that too. And evil people do that too. And people of all, of all types have cars and have good clothes and they feed. You can't leave your location because of survival. Because look, destiny itself is location sensitive. Mm. Repeat, repeat. Destiny itself is location sensitive. He said, I have, appointed your, I have determined your appointed times and the boundaries of your habitation. If perhaps you will grope for me, for in me you live, you move, you have your being. He has determined your appointed times and the boundaries of your habitation. That is the greatest. That when people say they want to be in a church, they are receiving one freedom. I don't understand it. The whole of that's why you have a house, you have an office. The, the whole of life is location sensitive. It's community sensitive. Absolutely. You can't be in this world and say you don't want to be part. So how can you be in a kingdom and not part of a church? It's location sensitive. But it's not just being in a church, but being in your church. Your church. You can't function in every church. Yes. Because that's why you can't function. Just like fruits don't grow. Apple cannot grow in Ghana. Right? You, you don't just plant apples because there is soil. You will plant apple in Lagos. It will not grow nothing. There is soil. There is water. You will wet it. It's not designed for, for such location. manifestation. It's going oh. to crash. It's never going to grow. No matter how much you put water in it, put fertilizer, it's not designed for that environment. So there's an environment for you. More than that, too, visa is not the will of God, guys. Visa is a human invention in response to human unguardedness. <laughs> it was not so at the beginning. I don't understand. Now. Yes, sir, I will explain, sir. So what I mean by that is when the Bible says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. When he said it, there was no visa in the world. <clears throat> and he expected you to be able to obey that instruction okay, without, without the approval of a third party. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's his command. It's yes, it was commanded. Ordination, yeah. Yes. And then he said, um, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in the remotest part of the world. Okay. And when that was said as well, there was no visa in the world. Visa was created by human beings in response to human unguardedness. Now, this is the thing. The reason why God said we should move horizontally, therefore, essentially is because there is a penetration and a dominance resident in us that we have to communicate. And that communication is hindered by a lot of the economics that move us around. And so you must understand, somebody said, what are you doing in the United States? I said, what is Toyota doing in Lagos? What is Microsoft doing in Lagos? 
What are all the big ideas doing everywhere in the world? Have you noticed that the most prosperous countries are the ones who are able to put their ideas everywhere in the world, yeah. attracting, purchasing power from all over the world, well, and bringing it to headquarters yes. in yes. Tokyo, yes. headquarters in, in Silicon Valley, yes. headquarters in Lagos. What is Japan without Honda, Toyota, Panasonic? Um, um, you can go on and on. What is Korea without Hyundai, Kia, um, Samsung, LG? What is Germany without BMW, Opel, Heineken, Saab, Volkswagen? You could go on and on. The United States, all of us can name a U.S. brand here, and we will not exhaust it. That's why they're the most powerful country in the world, because they are the ones with the highest number of brands collecting, purchasing power from all over the world and bringing to headquarters. When you run out to build economy in a host country, you weaken that very idea. You betray the very spirit of expansion and conquest and dominance and territorial penetration. Hmm. So you can't run to a country and go and hide and stay in a corner because you are missing, because you cannot pursue more than you see. If what you see is economics, your stomach, your bank account, you want to have a house by the time you are 40 as the proof of God's blessing upon your life, you are such <laughs> a small fiber that your bigness is created by the media that you control. You run your own press, so you lie to yourself recklessly, unguardedly, and you keep a curriculum that is untrue, but true in your smallness. Uh, uh, so actually, you are a slave please, clap, of your own clap, ignorance. Small, clap, small, so clap, the, way to go, the way to go is not to think of an escape, but to think like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is in Silicon Valley. He comes to Africa to do whatever, but he and returns to his Valley. base. Hmm. So we have transcended relocation. When you take your ideas to the level where you can move around in the world, yet, bring it, it wow. is not relocation first, it's restoration. You have been restored to that man that was told to fill the earth wow. with his ideas, with wow. his thinking, wow. which is what these guys are doing yes. every day. Yes. So if you don't have a dream to take out and democratize and ship around the world, maybe you are not ready for your next level yet. Your next level is to conquer your local so that your global can run to you. Ooh. That's the way it works. And I need to say that. But, then but, pandemic. But I think that speaks <laughs> to the pandemic because what the yes. pandemic did was to even make that easy. Yes, sir. Unlike yes, before. sir. Yes, sir. And if I'm going to speak to the pandemic, I'll tell you a few things. Whatever you do, whether you're an actor, a musician, you are um, a, an entrepreneur, an innovator, a fashion designer, whatever it is you do, Understand that the pandemic is not a coincidence. You first of all know, just what the pastor said, nothing really happens here on this side of heaven without some permission from the monarch of the universe himself. So even when ill or evil occur, it's not occurring away from God's sight. Yeah. If that is possible, then all of us are miserable. <laughs> because that means God is capable of afterthoughts. Yeah. And once God can do afterthoughts, we are all miserable because he can come tomorrow and say, ah, I didn't think through. There's somebody, it's a third testament. <laughs> so it means that all experiences in Christ Jesus are perfect and complete, right? If that is true, then you will eliminate coincidences. So God sees everything as it is. In 2018, January, I ran my conference where I told whoever cared to listen that by 2020, they were, and I documented it, it's in the city. By 2020, um, the world, 2020 and above, the world will be visited with a disruption. It's, on, it's online. I posted it on my, on, my, on my social media account. The idea that the world has been due for oh. updates. Hmm. Softwares run everything in the world. When your phone is due for an update and you don't update it, one, it's open to viruses. Yes, it can be attacked faster. Right. Then it malfunctions. It will just be slow. To, it will just be malfunctioning until you update. We have been due for a new update since 2017. How did I know? Theory. Not does the Lord. Theory. The theory is every 500 years, something unplanned, unprecedented hits the church first, goes into the world to shape culture. Oh, okay. Every 500 years. Go check it. Google it. It's not my idea. The last 500 years was 1517, the Martin Luther Reformation. Yeah. People forget that that was the beginning of democracy as we know it. That was the beginning of little governments as yes, we know it. Yes, yes, yes. Inquiries, public inquiries, transparency as we know it began from there. It disrupted the church theology, but then it went on into the world to shape culture and give us the system as we know it today. Well, 2017 was the end of that 500 years. 
You know, the Bible says we should learn to number our days so that we can understand, we can apply our hearts to wisdom. The whole world is a game of numbers. You know how one zero, one zero creates pictures for you on TV. You know that everything you see on TV is created by two figures, one and zero. Those, just two numbers creates all the pictures that you see on the screen. That is how everything you are seeing in this world, too, is governed by numbers. And the moment you are able to understand the numbers, in church, we, we know seven is the number of perfection. We know five is the number of grace. We know three is the number of the Trinity. We know these numbers. And there are numbers that govern everything. So the Bible says, teach us to number our days. Why? So that we can apply ourselves to wisdom. It means there is a level of clarity, wisdom, we will never attain to, except we learn to understand the rules and the governance of numbers. Now, every 500 years, that has happened. 2017 was a new beginning for the whole of mankind. And 2018 was supposed to launch into that newness. We took our time. Hmm. If pandemic did not happen, Zoom would have been bought by now. I can assure you of that. If the pandemic did not happen, you would not know StreamYard. There are so many companies you now know today, you will, they, they've been there. Yeah. They were panting for life. They were almost going to die because their time had come, but humanity wow. was taking its time to accept it. Wow. So the pandemic came not from God, just like had they known, they would not have crucified a lot of glory. You must understand that some of your next testimony cannot be started by God. The devil must start it. Amen. You must understand that it's not every blessing that God starts. There are some blessings that are overdue, and they have components of evil in it, that God does not do evil. It has to be activated by the one whose ministry is it's to evil. kill, to steal, and to destroy. So God hides his agenda in the character of the devil, such that as the devil is just being himself, God is achieving his agenda in areas he cannot reduce himself to perform in. Hey! So God cannot reduce himself, God cannot reduce himself and begin to kill people or to kill Christ. A new Christ must be killed because there's a higher principle that says without the shedding of blood, there's That's no remission, remission of sins. So he knew that Christ must be killed, but he doesn't kill and he doesn't tempt. So somebody must kill Christ. So people say, why didn't God kill the devil in the Garden of Eden? If God had killed the devil, man would have been, because who's going to kill Christ? Who's going to crucify him? Who's going to arrange all of that? So the devil is a partner. He's busy <laughs> executing at a level. And let me tell you, you must also understand this. Will, enmity, enmity is bigger than pain. Hmm. In, in, at the highest level of power, there's no enmity in the world. That's right. People that, see, the biggest... Um, discovery of a plan for terrorism, for terror in Russia was not discovered by the KGB. It was discovered by the CIA. And then the CIA so shared the intelligence with Russia. with Russia. I thought they were enemies. I thought they shouldn't collaborate. Be, US should be happy that hey, they're going to attack Russia. Let's be happy. Let them kill them. No. Because there are bigger agendas that if it occurs, it affects you and I. Mm, so, they had to. so we have to find a way to collaborate. The difference is God uses the devil to, ad to achieve agendas that he has no idea about. Yes, so he didn't good. know what was about Christ. His own decision is anything that makes sense and that is valuable, I must kill it, steal from it, or destroy it. So he was read only, read only. He could read the destiny of Christ. He could understand all of that and he said, I'm going to destroy him. But the agenda of heaven he could not see because he can't edit it. So what did God do? God plugged his agenda into that. The devil walked to tight nail. And when he was done, God said, it's finished. The devil said, I'm finished. God said, I'm finished. He said, no, you, you can't be finished. You didn't do anything. I did everything. I killed him. I finished it there. Because every time you work so hard, I achieve everything I want. You have never <laughs> been able to work independently. If you read the story of Job, devil works so hard. But at the end of it, the Bible Twice. says the latter end of Job was better than his beginning. Had he known, he would not have crucified, he would not have persecuted Job as well. If you knew Job will expand, you would have left him in the level he is. But God needed to promote Job. The Bible said Job's food come at the side of his food. The Bible says what I fear has come upon me. Hmm. Job has always been afraid of his billions of dollars. Meanwhile, God wants to give him trillions. And God says that if you run with footmen and they wear you out, how, how do you compete you with horses? If you struggle with 
300 million dollars, how do you deal with a billion dollars? That thing in you that cannot contain a billion that, that overprioritizes 300 million has to go. So, I don't take it out. I don't do evil. So have you seen my son, Joe? And then, yeah. Oh, All let, I know, let me talk to I, you. Let me deal, let me with, deal him. with him. All okay. he knows how to Go do, try it. Go and try to kill, it. to steal, <laughs> and to destroy. So the devil got him there and attacked and attacked and attacked. And just when he was done, God was done. <laughs> Had I known it's a virus, God has been using me for the devil because the virus not only works, it can't be retained. It do, it's anti-memory. So when the virus is at first, you can't remember its last operation. <laughs> so that is why he will use it for the devil a million times. He will, he will still do it a million times because the virus cannot be contained. You know, you know, ephemeral you know, um, experiences when you put a video on Instagram and yeah. then it disappears yeah. like it never existed. Yeah. So the virus is ephemeral like that. So it comes, it operates, and then it disappears. And then you don't have the memory of it again. And nobody who comes to that scene can understand it. So that is exactly how the devil operates. Now, the implication of that is that um, in your life, the devil will always walk to and nail. The pandemic represented that. Hmm. So the pandemic came, the devil thinking is attacking the world, the church, not knowing world, that yeah. he's advancing the world and the church into his highest level. Now, let me tell you this, and I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Amen. The next 10 years Calabas. will define the rise of the church yes. at a level we have never seen. So Listen, everything you are seeing in the pandemic is not about the world. It's about the church. The church is the issue in the pandemic. It's not what is happening in the world affecting the church. Mm -mm. It's what is happening in the church affecting the world. The church is the game center. We are the restrainer, first of all, even of the Antichrist is the church, yes, is the governance yes. of the church. And so at every point in time, we are the contest. The devil is fighting that reality. Now, the reality is the church is coming into it. Those of you who are criticizing, pointing fingers cheaply at pastors, um, pointing fingers cheaply at the church, there is no church in human history yes, that has God. ever experienced perfection. Never. That church has never been born, we'll will never, never be, be born. That's why it's a church. The person that can supply perfect behavior can never be born, including you. Such that in your personal affairs, if you insist that only through perfect behavior will you have peace, you will never have peace. Both of your wife or of your businesses or of your staff, they will give you imperfect behavior forever. They will disappoint you. They will let you down. The goal is not to tame people's behaviors, but to be mature, to handle them, whatever they do. That is the place of God and the Holy Spirit, and that's what we are called into. So my advice to all of us is that the pandemic has come to do two things. To introduce you to you. Hmm. You know, when people get into government, they say they change. They lie. They don't change. People rarely change. They are revealed. So when they got into government, government put them under pressure. And the thing inside comes The up. pressure now brings out its inside. Uh -huh. So the person is meeting himself for the first time. We are meeting him for the first time. Both us and him are meeting him for the first time. Each one is surprised. Ah, how can I be doing this? There's a social critic. Hello, let me go because of time. There's a social critic who was criticizing government all his life. Yes, yes. Then they brought him into government. I won't mention names. Yes, yes. When he got into government, he met himself. And all of us met him. For the first time, you know, when you step on cockroach, can blood come out? Why? Mm, there's no blood inside. There's no blood inside. When you squeeze a car, can milk come out? No. Fuel, water, oil, and metal. That's what we come out. When you put pressure on a thing, the content of the thing is revealed. When your wife says something nasty to you, and you are angry, if you slap her, it's not because of what she said. It's, the slap it's because you are a slapper. You. So somebody else in your situation will hear the same thing, and respond will be as angry as you, but not slap. will be as livid as you, but because he doesn't know how to slap, he will pick his jacket and go for a walk. You slapped because you're already a trained slapper. Whatever trained you in your upbringing made you a slapper. So this is the thing. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm going. When, the, when life tests you, you can only supply what is inside of you. So it's a revelation it's of It's your revelation. Of you yourself. see? Yes. And that that we, we will experience. How we behave so, under pressure. Yes. Reveals who you are to you. Hmm. That's why the Bible hmm. says, if you fail in the days of adversity, your strength has been low. You just didn't know. 
Whatever fooled you that you have occupied strength has now come to an end. Today is there the day you now know the true weight of yourself. And this is what you need to upgrade. So the idea is that the pandemic has come to introduce you to, to you. Yourself. But bigger than that is that the pandemic has come to fast track the whole world into its place in the clock of heaven. The Antichrist is coming. We are closer to that. I don't want to mention some things, but I think by all the signs that we see, I doubt if humanity has more than a particular number of years. Nobody knows that number. But I can, we know the times, and the Bible says we can know the signs, and we can have an idea. So the urgency of evangelism has come mm. upon us like never before. No wonder. The pandemic has come to remind all of us that you are not out of, you are not in control of nothing. Nothing. Yes. yes. And the software that runs the whole world is always independent of you. We call it CIA, Credible Independent Actions, owned by God, managed in heaven, deployed on earth by the Holy Spirit. When you understand that, you can't lead any change. When you hear people say in business school, we are leading change. They're talking nonsense. Nobody can lead change. You can only align yeah, with leverage change. And leverage because change. the very beginning of change, nobody sees it. It's a noiseless effect. When a woman gets pregnant, the day she gets pregnant, gone, 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 she didn't know. She had sex like before, got up like before. She left. But from that day, a new generation started in her. But she didn't know. She didn't hear bones come together. Boom, boom, boom. Ah, I think I'm pregnant. When you kiss somebody who is, uh, you kiss somebody deeply who is COVID positive, you don't hear an alarm. Bah! You Your are God. now COVID positive. <laughs> we got you. No. Noiseless effect. Everything looks normal. Then in a couple of days or weeks, 14 days thereabout, you begin to feel it. When David was anointed king, he didn't have the crown for over a decade. Yeah. When Saul was rejected king, was noiseless effect, the, the crown was in his head for another 17 years. Yes. yes. Meaning that the withdrawal of value may not be physically understood, yet does not determine, does not cancel the reality of the withdrawal. When virtue left Samson, the Bible said he rose up like before because he wasn't aware of the withdrawal. So the crown on your head does not even validate your position. It's just the limits of the human eyes and the clock of man. When God initiates his own clock, it transcends the limits of the human clock. And so a new clock has come into humanity led by the pandemic. It has brought speed. So as a business person, five questions you must be asking, no matter what you do, five questions you must ask. Number one, where is your new value? New value. If you're a business person, you can convert that to new money. If you are an innovator, you can see where's your new idea or your new value, whatever it is. But where is your new? Because you can't pour new wine into old wine skin. So whatever it is you have known now, old wine skin. There's a new that is coming and it cannot be contained by your old. So where's your new money, your new value? Who is holding that value? When I say who, I mean human beings, communities, the demography. Are they young? Are they old? Do they sleep? Do they not sleep? What do they eat? What do they stay? How do they work? Your customer base, may, your market might have changed and you're not aware. And you're still preparing for the old market. Hmm. Hmm. Because of time, if we had a conference here for another maybe four hours, I can explain to you actually how every market has changed in the world. And how your view of your old customer has been disrupted on many levels That's right. and that the pandemic actually gave the whole consumption community in the world a new taste and new preferences and every time you have a new taste and a new preference you also have new prejudices you know what prejudices are conclusions without justifiable explanation i am white i'm better than you that's not true there are black people who employ white people but your prejudice can make you believe so i am short therefore i can't find a, a, a girlfriend prejudice i am tall therefore i'm fine than none of you I have straight legs, I'm found that all of you. Prejudice, you can't justify it. That's prejudice. Now there's a lot of prejudice in how we think. It defines our limitation and our smallness. So my advice is understand your new market, new market, your new followers, your new demography, your new audience. They are, even if they have not changed physically, their thinking has changed, their taste has changed, their preferences has changed, their, their prejudices has changed. And you have to meet that. Number three, first of all, where is the money? Where is the new value? Who is holding it? How do you now reach them? Because it has also affected how you reach those people. The same way those people change, how to reach them has also changed. So you can't be reaching them the same way you were reaching them before. 
you'll be disrupted and you'll be a victim and a casualty of that newness. So where is the value? Who is holding it? How do I reach them? If I reach them, what do I say? What is the narrative? What is my story? Ten years ago, if you start a statement, sir, with so, so we present to the microphone, Pastor Yemi Davis, and he come on the microphone. You know, today you can start this thing by saying, so, yesterday, you know, you can do that now and get away with it. Fifteen years ago, if you do that, they say, why, why is he starting with so? He's a weak pastor. You know why we are not saying so? We are all telling a story. And every moment in life, everything going on is a continuation of a story. All of a sudden, without nobody teaching us, so. we could come and start a statement and say, welcome to the microphone, Allah and I would say, so, yesterday, and nobody had a problem with it. That was bad grammar 20 years ago. Now it's accepted as normal grammar. Anybody start a statement with so, I can just start this thing and say, therefore, because I'm, I've been in a story. The people listening to me are all in a story. And at every point in time, we are telling stories. So what is the story that you are telling? What is the narrative you are selling? And then most importantly, where is the money? Who is holding it? How do you reach him? If you reach him, what do you say? If you know what to say, how do you say it? Do you need to change your vehicle? Do you need to abandon advertisements and go for PR? Do you need a podcast? Do you need a free commodity to share with people to, to gather data? What it is? What is it? What is your freemium? Google has a freemium. Facebook has a freemium. So people don't even know how Google makes money. Some people don't even know how Facebook makes money. But everything you are doing free on Google is their freemium. Their business model is right behind all of that. And they are making so much money around what is free for you. Your free is a strategy. Premium is over, overrated. Freemium mm -hmm. is the new level that shields premium from <laughs> observer's view. Hey. So there's something hey. called deja vu. Listen to this. There's something called deja vu. Free which is when you see something unfamiliar as familiar, but there is vujade as there is deja vu. And that is when you see something familiar and you create newness out of it. So that is vujade. It's the opposite of deja vu. Deja vu. So vujade is the spirit of innovation. I can look at this watch and find its next level. So it's time for you to lock into your own vujade which is everything you have known, you need to start questioning it and birthing new scenarios from them. That is the loudest noise of the pandemic. Thank you. Wow. Freemium, that freemium. Did you form it? <laughs> I've not had it before. <laughs> it's there, I, know, I, know, I know the principle, but... Yes, I didn't form I like it. it. It's, it's actually, I don't know how I know yourself, uh, but it's out there. Wow. I like it, freemium. Yes, sir. Wow. Premium, freemium. Heaven meal. <laughs> <laughs> Praise that. Let's put our hands together some more. For ah, I, I just feel you need to say something about um, kingdom addiction. Yes, sir. Just some few words. Awesome. Uh, what What you think about kingdom addiction? Yes, sir. The benefits of kingdom. Yes, sir. Um, I know there is no human being who doesn't desire prosperity. If you say money is not important, we know a problem. You have been defeated by poverty. And then in your defeat, you have formed a new nature based on poverty. Therefore, you will never experience prosperity. That's not a curse. That's not a curse. You, you know, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Ah. I hope you understand that. Like politicians, right? Yeah. Oh. They are, their poverty transcends the container of coins and notes. Hmm. They are actually so poor that the only thing valuable in their life is take that money away and they are dead and useless. And there are so many people jogging for that kind of life because their meaning and their purpose is regulated outside in, not inside out. Right? And that's why they need salaries, they need, you know, pegs, official car, they need all of those things to define their meaning. People go to look for jobs and if you can't pay them some type of money, really can't take that job because they are mm. looking for the pegs, but they can't find their completion. Those things make sense, and the human condition must pursue them. I mean, look at myself and Pastor Yemi, we look good. Mm. We're not poor people. You can look at us and know that, okay, these guys have some value in their life that creates their economic, right? But if that is all that defines who we are, then we are blind physically and dead internally. We have to be better than that because that is what God calls us into. 
And let me tell you what I mean. You see, in the kingdom, two things you must defeat, and it's part of the limiting mindset, sir. Two things. You don't, you know, we read a scripture that says, anybody who has given away house, homes, land, whatever for me, it will be rewarded in this life, and then with persecution, of course, and then the life to come, eternal life, right? That suggests that you can actually want more money, you want prosperity, and the equation to the prosperity is go and give land. Wow. Give yourself, give your money, give your things, so that you can have what you have. In other words, you have come to a God, come, come, I'm going to do something. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You have come to a God who is, the Bible says, he that must come to God must believe that he is. But this is what you are doing. You want phone in his hands. Yeah. Where's your right hand? Okay, so we have that phone. Don't, don't forget that in his hand, you know, in his presence, fullness of joy, at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. So this is all you want. Right hand. Many, all you want is here. Many phones. Right <laughs> on the right hand. That's what, that's what you want. Then you come to a God who has. The phone. Okay. We rarely come to a God who is. So, because of the promise of reward, is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It is not what you do something to get. Rewarding is a definition of his character. He will give to you even if you don't want. Such that if he gives and you reject, you are prideful. Because that is the father's heart given to you. Wow. It's not about what you give. You come to him not focusing on this. To him. You come to a God who is, is. and then he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So. This reward is what he hugs you with when you come, when you to, come to him. him. Seek yeah. first his him. kingdom and his righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. Like byproducts. So what we do is, put up your hands, what we do is, Lord, I love you. I believe in you. <laughs> oh, he is here. You have come to a God who has and what he has. And so you are loving up, singing and fasting and doing all of that. He said, you ask, you don't and receive. Because you ask. Because you, ask. you want to ask for a means to spend it on your pleasures. This is not why you come to God. You come to God here. Him, now, him. let me now take that into that kingdom addiction. In Christ Jesus, we are soldiers of the kingdom. No soldier in every day, no soldier in active service entangles Goes. himself with the affairs of everyday life. Everyday issues of contemporary life. No soldier in active service. There are soldiers who are not in active service. Yes. They entangle <laughs> themselves with the affairs of everyday life. When you are a soldier, do you know any government, do you know any soldier that buys his own uniform? His own guns? I've seen them. They exist. I walked into a tailor's office some years ago. A policeman came to sew his, his trouser. Ah. He, he came to sew his own trouser. So I've seen a policeman in, the, in Balogun buying his own shoes. How much? For, can you sell it for two, five? He was negotiating his own shoe that he will wear to go and walk. His own black shoe, right? So irresponsible governments, and I'm not mentioning which country, please. Irresponsible governments can actually allow the soldier to buy his own uniform. But responsible governments okay, him up. don't allow... In fact, if you're in the U.S. Army, somebody joined the U.S. Army. While he was... Tra no, he has finished training. He, was, he didn't lose his life in battle. Just a domestic accident, but in the, in the military exercise. Yes. He died. Wow. He was about to divorce. They were about... To, they were in the process of divorce, but they have not divorced. Then the husband died. And once you die like that, it's $400,000 to your family. Are you serious? Four hundred thousand dollars. Don't tell Nigerians that. Wherever you lose your life, listen. So this guy. Some people can't, <laughs> I can't so this guy's family got four hundred thousand dollars. The wife will have been so glad that the divorce had not come true. But all of that happened. Wow. Uniform. You have uniform for dinner. You have uniform That's for breakfast. True. You have That's the true. underwears. True. You have you are oversupplied with all that you need, right? Responsible governments. The United States government, for example. If you want to run for election as a, for, for president, you must tell us your plans for veterans. That's true. Yes. There's no campaign yes, without, without explaining plan. yes. your plans. for. If you talk nonsense on that subject, you can, you can lose the election yes. like that. Yes. 
So you mu- the, the military, we, we get into a plane. It happens to us every time in the yes, U.S. You get into a plane, first. people stand up and begin to clap for a military man. People yes. give up their seats. Yes. Businessmen, we tell the man to come and sit in business class. Yes. They go yes. and sit in economy. Yes. Yes. Just to celebrate that man. That's why there's so much premium on it because there's a responsible government managing the military. Now, as soldiers of Christ, you must know that God is not responsible. God is faithful. Responsibility is a parallel experience between two equals. So it's man that can be responsible. That's why nowhere in scripture do they say our God is responsible. Our God is a responsible God. God. Mm. (laughs) Our God is faithful faithful. because faithful transcends the limits of human behavior. Faithfulness can occur even in your faithfulness. So God transcends all of that. So responsibility is a game of man Faithfulness is a divine experience and a divine quantity. Now, God is faithful. If a U.S. government that is only responsible can can so take care of its soldiers that they lack nothing, what will a faithful government be doing? So God is so faithful that he will take care of you. That's not an issue. I say to people, the day you lose the fear that God will take care of you, that's where your kingdom begins. Hmm. That's, that the king, no, that's, the, that's the kingdom. The day you lose the fear that God will take care of me and you do what you have to do, whatever it has to take, that is when your kingdom begins. So what happens is when you are a soldier of Christ, your shoe is part of your uniform. Your house is your barracks. Your wow. briefcase is your uniform. It's your gun. Everything you ask, you, you can't, I can't remember the last time I prayed. People see me, they see expensive things on me. I said, but I can't remember the last time I was in a store. I can wear a watch of God knows how much dollars. It's a gift. Those things are sent to me by the government of heaven because they are tools. If I have a shoe, I'm not going to take it to a club to harass young girls. If I have a new car, it's not to put my hands under the blouse of innocent girls. It's to think beyond that and understand its purpose. A car is not a testimony. It's first of all a tool of effectiveness, Kaya. of speed and efficiency. When you I'm receive comfort. a car as a testimony and you come to touch us in church and you bought a car, we know you are just celebrating an escape from your poverty because the car is no longer a tool of effectiveness. It is now a symbol that represents superiority for those observing you. So when you have a car, you know you now have something valuable, not by its design and its essence and its purpose, you have something valuable by the ignorance of those who observe you. Because in their mind, you are better than us because of the car you have. So when you come to share a testimony, you are rejoicing in their lack, not in a tool that has moved you forward. You are still a poor man. And so to transcend all of that is to know that your car is a tool of effectiveness. (laughs) And that when you understand that purpose, a private jet will come. When you understand that purpose, a, a car will not be enough after a while. Private jet will come because yeah. your work now requires, requires a private jet. You don't pray for those things. Yeah. Those things happen to you based on what I call APP. Hmm. Assignment protective power. Uh-huh. It's what keeps you alive. <laughs> you will die, but you cannot be killed. Long life is no longer a testimony. It's a testimonial. Yeah, but it can't be yes. compared to the credibility of your existence. Good. If long life is the testimony of, your Christ, of a Christian, Jesus was an embarrassment. Because he died at 33. The longevity of your life, if I send you to Lagos Island, I will give you 2,000 naira to go and come back. If I send you to Abuja, I'll give you 100,000 naira. And I'll give you two days to go and come back. If I send you to the VI, I'll send you... 2,000 naira with three hours to go and come back, or four, 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 five, five hours. If I send you to America, I'll give you maybe one week to go and come back. And I'll give you maybe one million naira for whatever you want to go and do. The assignment I sent you, the errand, determined how long you spent there and how much I gave you. So you must understand that it is your assignment in the New Testament that determines how long you live, how much you have. You can't have faith more than what is written of you. If you are a billionaire, your dream is running towards you. What you need is to focus on affairs of the kingdom. kingdom you need to come to someone like Pastor, 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 Pastor Yemi and say, Pastor, what is our goal this year? What is our financial budget? I want to understand because when, we, when you are taught in business schools, you know. Yeah. You are not supposed to go into a year without knowing the budget of your country. 
and for you to determine as a company what percentage of that you want to take. take. So, in the same way, I come to you and I say, Pastor, what is our budget for the year? I want to know what percentage of that I want to take. Only me. Wow. So maybe only me this year now I'm responsible for 10% of the entire budget I'll give this of, global import, of global impact. When that is your company, do you know anyone, anywhere, that God will play second fiddle to any business? The reason why we don't prosper and we struggle and we can't focus on the kingdom essentially is because we are pursuing what is designed to gravitate towards us. Goodness and mercy shall, shall not be before you to be pursued all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, not for a while. And so your dreams are designed to gravitate towards you, not for you to pursue. And when you understand that, you take your eyes off this thing focus. and focus on him. What you say, what you want, when you want. I will fall short, I will struggle. But all my falling and struggling is the beat to keep myself focused on you. And when I do that, you, you don't have a choice. It's not what I ask for, it's just what you do. You wrap me up with all of that. So in a sense, I'm not investing all I have so that I can get more. No, I am investing all I have into you. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Whether I like it or not, at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You don't get a tap water, a tap, a conduit. A conduit does not have faith to be wet. The job of the conduit is to pass out water to those who are thirsty. As long as it's passing that water to those who are thirsty, whether he likes it or not, a residue of what is passing now we'll remains you. inside yes, that place. Yes, For he that watereth will himself be watered. So success is not a goal, it's an experience. It's what happens to you, not by pursuing, but by focusing on his agenda. A Christian is not going to succeed, it's a success. Yes. And when he sits within the lines of what God seems to do and focus on affairs of states, affairs of the kingdom, this is his natural experience. That is where we struggle with kingdom addiction. We keep the fear of whether God will take care of us or not. And when you lose that fear, that is when your kingdom begins. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Pastor Lumi, thank you. I mean, uh, okay. Can we put our hands together for um, Pastor Kule?